this week, only the guys will be going on dates. So you having fun? A lot's been going on lately, so I'm a little overwhelmed. We just feel uncomfortable being on a date right now with another female. What I'm looking for is really a man that can lead. Are we okay with the boundaries? Those boundaries didn't even matter because I was going to be who I was going to be anyway. No, oh, no, I'm not going to agree with that. Well, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Too. Oh, no handshake. Yeah, okay. Hello. When you step out with my man, I'm watching you. Your arm in your lap. Nah, okay. I'm chilling right now. I know she's a jealous woman now. She is. She thinks that I'll be at these other women all the time, but I don't. I have several receipts. Let's first of all make it clear. We're at an impasse in our relationship because I don't have a sense of security. And it puts us in a horrible place. We've been so in love for a minute now. now. Let's make it official. Let's get down. Say some vows. I do, I do. I do, I do. Do you? He was too happy. He was too excited about this woman that he does not know. His excitement with those other women, I finally saw it for myself. That's the problem. So this was not about her? No. Coming into this process, trust and infidelity is definitely our number two issue. I don't trust Fonzo. So now, being confronted with his dates, hearing him talk about other women, I think that's a problem because I don't know, maybe somebody will turn his head. So trust Fonzo? My trust is very, very limited. It was hours that went by. Before you know it, I started pacing. Then I looked back at the phone. Anything could have happened. I don't have a sense of security, and it puts us in a horrible place. When someone goes outside of a relationship, they're usually doing it as a result of turning away from each other, dismissing each other, or seeking a new self-identity. This goes back to my original statement from week one. We're here to do the work. You and your partner can only give each other what you need if you're committed and you're communicating clearly with one another. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Miss Shorty and Mr. Kenneth, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, Mr. Kenneth. You went out on a date with Shamaya. How was the date? Me and my lady was in a bad space already, and so I'm going out on a date now with a new female, and my energy back at home ain't right. I was anxious. I was anxious to really get off the date here. I mean, I'm not even playing. I mean, I already knew that young lady was going to have a challenge on her hands. You know, where we were at, he wasn't super gung-ho about going on a date when, when we were in a good space. So we were in a bad, I, like, I felt bad for her. I don't think he was that attracted to her either, though. She was an attractive girl. She's from Mississippi, so she had that Southern girl roots and stuff. And my heart and my mind wasn't completely like there, so it was just impossible for me to even even give her that attention that she deserved, though, because you were distracted. There. Yes, ma'am. So one of the things that you'll have to think about in this process is any internal attempts you have to sabotage your partner's dates, because what you want to really connect within this process is your partner's ability to manage themselves and your partner's ability to choose whether or not they want to move forward in building a life. I don't think Shorty would be trying to sabotage her, mess with me on purpose, but uh, the whole relationship at times, when I'm in a bad space with Shorty, she can make me feel like my worth isn't, like I don't have a work to the world, like the good as in me don't even exist. I don't know, is that what your intentions are? Every day, your partner has to make the choice to choose you. And they gotta do that on their own. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's move on to you, Mr. Otis. You went on a date with Sharif. Yes. How was the date? She was a cool person, a decent energy as far as like, she's a positive girl, conversation was cool. I like that she has a traditional foundation. I would say I'm traditional in foundation. Okay. But. The way we function, it's been closer to 50-50 in my opinion. What does that mean when you say in foundation? I'm willing to take on more if I need to and just make it easier for her. I think she likes the 50-50 thing a lot more than I do. And I, oh, okay, I, like, I like making her life easier. He likes to take control, period, in most situations. Maybe it is a traditional thing too, like just having the control. And when it comes to listening and letting me you know, get my point across and hear me, we're still working in that area for sure. 
Sometimes it seems like Charlie wants it both ways. Like she wants to be the sweet submissive girl and all the benefits that come with that. And out of nowhere, she will try to be more in charge and that has caused a lot of conflict. I have heard that I'm not gonna talk about this anymore and this is what it is. And I don't accept it. You know, in some of these power dynamics, the question becomes, do you allow your partner to influence you enough to be willing to have a different perspective? Or is it where I started is where I'm gonna end, so this is it. Because at that space, where do you go? I think sometimes his traditionalism could possibly cause an issue with our communication. I think that we both need another perspective. So if we have that, I, I mean, I don't see how it couldn't help us. Okay, guys, the time has come. Each of you needs to decide how you'd like to move forward. Would you like to go on a second date? Or would you like to meet someone new? Kenneth, you had a date with Shemaya. Would you like to take her out on a second date? I think I'm a pass. It was just not clicking for me. Okay. Going forward, I do feel like through this process, I'm in a better space now. We was at each other's neck a little bit last week, so it brought tensions and that things that I just couldn't wiggle around and relax, so I'm, I'm much more relaxed. Okay. Yeah, we were adjusting to this process. It has been very intense. Man, <laughs> you're bringing all yes. the emotions out. Understood. Yeah. All right, Alfonso, will Chantel be getting a second date? Oh, the energy one now. I'm a big energy guy, so if we ain't clicking, it's like, eh, we just waste each other's time. So it was like, I was ready to go. The smiles, everyone. <laughs> she smiles now. <laughs> OK. I pretty much figured, you know, he wouldn't be going on another date. Are you going to let him have this process? I don't know, because at the end of the day, it's still a challenge. <laughs> She's still looking at my man. And it's still his choice whether he wants to move on or if he wants to stay with me. So why would I make it easy for the next? I'm not going to do that. Hope springs eternal. <laughs> Let's move on to Otis. You had a date with Sharif. Would you like to take on a second date? No. Tell me why. I just didn't click with her. Miss Charlena, do you think he's taking full advantage of the process? Or is he on his best behavior? I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure. It seems like he's on his best behavior. OK. Well, all of you have officially completed your first round of dating other people. Congratulations on trusting each other enough to make it this far. Now we're going to take things a little bit further. This week, everyone except Alfonso and Shay will be going on dates. I'll stop by for a one-on-one -on -one session with you two. What do you guys think about that? I'm here for it. OK, so remember the goal at the end of this process is to answer an extremely important question that's going to affect you for the rest of your life. Is it time to move on or is it time to put a ring on it? Let's just continue on the journey and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Bye. I'm looking forward to this date a little bit more than I was looking forward to the first one because I'm a lot more relaxed. Me and Shorty making progress, we're in better space. I'm just gonna try to kick back and get the best out of the experience. What's that? I don't know. You looking forward to your date? Um, more than the last time? Yeah, more, more than the last time. So give it a fair chance. I want you to see what's out there. I honestly want Kenneth to really embrace the process, to get out and have fun on his date. I want him to give his dates a chance. And how will you know if I'm the one that's for you if you don't get out here and see what the world has to offer? My name is Maya Asia. I'm born and raised in Atlanta, and I'm a radio personality and entrepreneur. I'm not a home wrecker, but I do think that true love should be tested. So if he decides that, you know, things work better in his favor when he's around me, then I'm gonna pursue that. So at the end of the day, it's all free game. Shall I show you? You know I'm gonna. You, oh, you got that? Yeah, I'll go get her. Hi. My Asia. Sure. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> what is going on? What is really well, going how are on? You? It's been years. It has been. This Crazy. is awkward. I ain't gonna lie, it's awkward. Definitely an awkward <laughs> reunion, uh, right. to say the least. That's right. Come on in though. Okay. <laughs> Jesus take the wheel when I open up the door. And it's a woman who I know. Not just a woman who I know, a woman who I worked with. My former morning show intern is about to take my man out? What in the world is going on? <laughs> so uh, I definitely wasn't expecting to see you. Were you expecting to see me? I don't know what's going on. I just know they're supposed to be a fine man and I'm supposed <laughs> to be taking him on a date and then boom, it's your man. <laughs> exactly. I don't know if I feel better or worse that it's you. Right. Uh, I don't know. My age are cool and all. She pretty, got good personality, you know, just very lively and stuff. It's just, I'm just tripping right now. Like, how y'all know each other? We used to work together. <laughs> what? Yeah. We, go, we go back. I mean, we know each other, so. Yeah. I think that it's one of those things where I don't want to say may the best woman win, <laughs> but I definitely feel like we'll see where it goes. For sure. <laughs> this chick told me, let the best woman win. Hopefully he makes it back. Ah, OK, I like that. <laughs> All right, challenge. <laughs> so I mean, does she feel like she got a point to prove? Do I need to be worried? Y'all have fun. <laughs> hey, I always want to ride in one of these. You've never seen a pretty girl in a slingshot, huh? Push it to the limit, I'm in it to win it. I'm in it to win it, yeah, I'm in it. I smell it already. You get to show me what you're about. Oh, yeah. I feel better that I can relax on this date better than I did on my last date because I'm not letting my mind be overclouded with of things that I can't control anymore. I'm just gonna relax, you know, try to kick back, have a couple brews, have a drink, eat some good old seafood, you did. <laughs> all right, that feel good. Got one shot at me, all right, now the real questions. What's that? I'm ready, I'm loose now. First of all, <laughs> I need to ask you, what do you do? <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, really, but right now I'm, a, I'm just doing general contracting work. Okay. And I also started a little food blog. Yeah. You know, trying to get popping with that. What is it called? That skinny fat man. That skinny fat man. You think mm. you a skinny fat man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can put it away. Because you like to eat. Definitely. That is so crazy. I love to eat. I love seafood. I'm loving this energy already. Mm. I really am. A good deal. Likewise. <laughs> What's your sign? I'm a Gemini. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, man. What you do? Why would you do that for? Where, where your birthday? June 18th. I'm a Gemini. For real? June 1st. What? <laughs> Cheers to Team Gemini. <laughs> team Gemini. Cheers to Team Gemini. <laughs> yeah. I like Maya's energy and personality. She has positive vibes. She's down to earth. I can't say that there's a connection there. Right off the back, you know, it's, it's still fresh. Look, you can see the eyes and everything. Like, this is it's too real. You can just twist it, just like that. Bam. Some people suck the hair. Mmm. What? This is. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, you're an expert, <laughs> girl. Cut up, damn. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say is some of your flaws? Because everything sounds so good. <laughs> my flaw is how big of a heart I got. Okay. Me thinking that I'm compassionate and folks have the same compassion as me. And then when you hurt and you don't feel that compassion or you don't feel that, that love that you was. Needing it, it, it hurt. Yeah, and then you take your heart, you internalize it because mm -hmm. you can't understand I'm why like, I'm, somebody would do you like that. I'm like, I'm going so hard, I'm trying to do this this way, this this way, but it ain't enough. I'm a little bit tripped out, you know, because some of the things I like about Shorty, you know, I like in my age as well. My age allows me to open up and be myself, and I can open up and be myself with Shorty in a lot of cases. It's just Shorty is just the drama that gonna come with it. I mean, to me, you seem like. The perfect catch. Wow. Why well, you trying to make me blush like I'm that? I'm not girl? trying to make to you rub it on like I'm that. I'm not. I'm not trying to like make you blush back. God, I'm not. <laughs> Help me. I'm making it hard for you, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'm applying some pressure right now. <laughs> you need that pressure applied so you know exactly where you want to be. <laughs> Got nope. you hot and bothered. <laughs> what? It ain't even the crabs. It, it's, it's me, huh? <laughs> yeah, and show vibe. Yes, 
I gotta switch it up, switch it up, switch it up, and keep pushing it, and keep moving, no love. I'm headed to my second date, and if I still got it like I think I do, the natural person I am can be a little smooth when it comes to dates, so I wanted to surprise her. With a perfect date, location, horseback riding right up my alley. Hello, I'm Milan. Otis, Otis, Otis Weary. Hey guys, I am Milan, also known as DJ Milhouse. I am 30 years old and I'm straight here from Atlanta, Georgia. I hope that I find somebody who I can vibe with and actually a friend, you know, hope, I'm hoping to build a friendship with somebody. All right, you guys. What's up, buddy? Oh, you look good, okay. Where are you from? Atlanta. What I was part? born and raised in Decatur. Me too. Yeah? Hey, what school did you go to? I went to Southwest the Cabin. Stop playing. So did I. <laughs> what do you do now? Um, I'm a DJ. You DJ? Mm-hmm. All right. This is so refreshing. Isn't it? Yes, yeah, beautiful. So, so far, me and Milan are getting along. It's a good vibe, it's a good experience, and I'm having a good time. Ooh. Seriously, that right? To what? To the right. That was amazing. It was. Yeah? My first impression of Otis is, oh, he's cute, you know? He seems cool. He seems like a man who has a little bit of hustle going on. Everything that, you know, a woman really wants in a man. What else do you do for fun? I like outdoor stuff, mostly. Mm -hmm. um, golf, fishing. Boating, jet skis, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Working out, you know. Me working I can tell out you work is out. not fun. You can tell? Yeah. A little something. I'm trying to be consistent. You look good. Thank you. So do you. Where'd you get your name from? My mom. The city. It's, she just loved my line. What about Otis? Otis is, is my dad's name. You look like an Otis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you look like a strong black man. I love it. I'll take it. It's positive, yeah. I I'll take that. All right. Well, that's my last little sip of uh, wine. <laughs> yeah. But look, if you're free tonight, I have a show tonight. Definitely come hang out. Where are you going to be at? I'm at Steak Market. Steak Market. Steak Market. That's tricky right there. I really want to see Milan DJ. She's into the music and the arts, and so am I, so that's pretty cool. And she is a beautiful girl. Ah, <sighs> decisions, decisions. We can have some more wine. I do not want to rock the boat with my relationship just yet or anything like that, so I'm gonna have to say no. But I had a good time. She definitely brought some positive energy and might want to see more of that. Your girlfriend is a lucky woman. I appreciate that. You wanna clean up now because somebody's coming over. I'm clean up when I'm here by myself. I always clean up behind you, and that's exactly what you do. You sit there and you drink and you eat like I'm the maid. Going into this couple session, I really want to talk to Dr. Nicole about our trust issues a little bit more in detail because I definitely feel the area of trust is something that we're here to work on. I'm really ready to air this thing out. See good to see you. Yes, I heard y'all laughing. So <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a very good That's day. a good start, right? <laughs> that's a good yes, start. Yes, it is. Please have a seat. How are y'all? Good. How was everything for you guys after the session? Talk to me about where you are. My problem is more so that I don't have a sense of security okay. in how he handles situations. Okay. And that presents the distrust. That presents, to me, almost, it's just a big insecurity. Well, the issues that we having is trust because the job I do, which is in the entertainment business, I help manage Rick Ross. So there's a lot of females around, so she feel like I'm very untrustworthy when it comes to other females. We've had situations, and it's kind of like how he's dealt with the family, where he just allows things to play out. And I really shouldn't have anything to say because in his eyes, I don't have proof no matter how it's portrayed. Mm -hmm. So if a woman contacts me in any kind of way, he's like, oh, it's not true, it's not this. But if you're out communicating with different women and they have full access to you at any point in time and you don't see that as a problem, then if it was the shoe was on the other foot and it was a man, how would you feel? 
at this point, I'm trying to keep my composure. I'm really trying to hold it together, but it's bothering me. I don't wanna be in a situation or get married to a man who doesn't take infidelity serious, who's going to entertain other women. So yes, I'm hurt at this moment. Talk to me. Uh, well, for one, we talking about social media. But the girl posted a picture of me and her and she said how she cared about me and all this stuff. No, no, no. She said he was the love of her life. They were like this. You guys know we were not like that. But anyway. Okay. You know, well, don't downplay it. This woman had your phone number. She called him while we were in the car one day. And this he is one said, I previously dated like a while ago. So Before you her. would see if he dated this woman and you're in a picture and she's saying love of my life, you need to at least explain to me who is this woman? Why does she feel this way? And then when the woman presents herself, why don't you say anything? We're gonna keep it real. I was in the streets when we started off. We hadn't committed it, but she knew I was dealing with multiple women. So I guess she kind of kept an eye to that and she feel like I'm still doing that. And so any little thing gonna set off like, oopsie, I knew it. But anyway, okay. I promote a lot of stuff, so it's open. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be thousands of girls gonna, you know, shoot, say stuff and do things. Stuff I can't control because again, the social media, so. My only issue is how Fonzo has handled the situation. Sounds, again, like boundaries. How he governs himself speaks to how he honors himself and how he honors you, and vice versa. Right. If he doesn't have good boundaries, people are going rough shot because they don't have a boundary that says what you have here is worthy of protecting. They're going to get that from you, Mr. Alfonso. Man, you know, I'm just a cool guy. Women love me, and the girl's going to be right. Ain't, ain't nothing I can do is support her life. But she just had to trust me not break what we have over some one night fling when I'm out of town or out the country, you know, with this music stuff. So where do you see your responsibility in how these people are showing up in your relationship? Stop being so friendly. OK, think, talk to yeah, me I about think, that. Yeah, I think I'm a little bit too friendly. OK. So I'm working on that. So I'm learning as we go. So she upset about how that picture look. OK, now we have to maybe slide over a little bit. No more just being so accessible. Let's just cut it out. What do you feel about that? And that would be a really good resolution if it had truth and validity to it. What does that mean? So when Fonzo says that he's friendly and he's working on not being so friendly and accessible, he's just creative with how he's no longer being friendly and accessible. I don't want you communicating with other women outside of a business relationship, outside of friends, should I say, but I don't want to use the term friends so loosely because then it will give him the doorway to do what he wants to do. He already has that. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a false sense that you can control what he's doing. Mm -hmm. The boundaries are him being able to say, this does not support or serve me what I'm trying to build with Shay. Put this thing together and let's figure out how we separate the boundaries and we actually put the work in that Dr. Nicole is telling us to do. Either make a decision and let's move forward or move on without me. You really gonna have to think about how much power you give other people outside of your home. I don't know what to do to stop them from doing dumb stuff like that, I don't know. But you gotta protect what you're trying to create. Well, he better feed you then. Are you looking forward to your date today? Are you excited? Mm. You better not be excited. I just need to eat or he gonna have a hard time. Well, good. Be hangry. Be hangry on the date. That's perfect. You want me to be hangry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, I didn't get to ask you, how was your date? It was good. It was you good. Tell me about your date. How was your I date? didn't. Uh, we went horseback riding. To get out there and get back on the horse was, was dope. It was too short, though. After that workout, I think I earned a drink. You may go on your date, so. Wait, hold on, going back to your date. 
How was everything? It was good. How was, it was she? Cool. She, I enjoyed it for sure. It was all good. I learned a few things about her, I guess, and learned stuff about myself. What'd you learn? Us. Cheers. You like to go cheers with me? What did you learn? Really? Yeah. In a minute. Mm. It would be ideal if on any date during this process, I could just share whatever with Charlie and it go well. But I already know from experience that anytime I mention any girl, it always agitates Charlie. She goes from zero to a hundred and the conversation goes from what could have been pleasant to now an argument. So what did you learn? So what I learned about myself is I should go horseback riding more often. So what did you learn so, about her? Um. About her, so she was cool. Good, per good personality, good conversation. Uh, she, I enjoyed it, for sure. I'm wondering if he's holding back on some things that happened during his date. Yeah, I just, I don't think he's being completely honest about it. Let's go. Uh, I got soul, I got My name is Brent, I'm 30 years old and I'm from Decatur, Georgia. I look for a woman who's smart, ambitious, talented, and knows what she wants out of life. Oh. Uh, Can I answer well, that? Well, here we go. Mm -hmm. Let's see who this is. Who is it? It's Brent. Looking for Charlena. Oh, uh, come on in. When I met Brent, he seemed to be, you know, presenting himself as a little more sophisticated. I'm getting a little different vibe from Brent than I got from Meadow right now. Oh, this man. Brent. Come on up. Hey, Charlie. Yes. Got somebody here who wants to meet you. They said they want to take you out <laughs> on a date. Hi. Charlie, this is Brent. Nice to meet you. Brent, nice to meet you. Charlie. Where y'all going? Where y'all going? <laughs> going to a pasta making class. Pasta making yeah, class. That's right. Ooh. Well, you know she can't cook, right? <laughs> yes, I can. Shut <laughs> up. But cool, man. Uh, y'all enjoy the date. Treat Charlie like you would. Want someone to treat your daughter. Of course. You know? Of course, I and appreciate it. should be cool. <laughs> he needs to know, hey, my woman don't get no happy ideas, and I don't want him to feel like he can be closer to her than I am. Another date. is so sweet, it's romantic, there's rose petals everywhere, and I find Brent to be attractive. What I'm looking for most about this date is just getting to know Brent. If you just wanna go ahead and grab a nice handful of that flower, spread it out right in front of you, there you go. But where's the stack up so far? All the first dates you can think of. This is a cool date because we're cooking, yeah. <laughs> learning how to make pasta. My boyfriend's a chef. <laughs> Does he roll out his pasta like me? Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's the same. It's different. All right. So I'll put these off to the side. If you guys want to go ahead and get seated, and then we'll get that first pasta out to you. Sounds good. Thank All you. Right. You're welcome. All right, so this is nice. <laughs> yes, it is. I definitely think it's a connection here between me and Charlie. She is a beautiful woman, extremely mature, very polite. What is there not to like about Charlie? So where do you see yourself in five years? With a family, mm -hmm. married, and you know, in a good relationship. Okay. What about you? Starting a family and getting ready for my congressional race. That's what I'm looking forward to. I wanted to run for office eventually. Yeah. So my goal is to attack that through economics in the black community, right? <laughs> That's yeah, dope. Yeah, so you know. We gotta all work right, together. All right, doing big things. For I sure. see that, I see that, I like that. I have never dated a politician before, so when he tells me he's running for Congress, I actually thought it was really interesting. We're having great conversation. He is actually really smart, and he seems very sure of himself. Those qualities are definitely attractive. Do you consider yourself traditional? In some ways. What are in those some ways? ways? I would like to be in a position when I have my family so that my wife doesn't have to work unless she wants to. Okay. Um, that's my goal. So I'm oh, traditional nice. in that sense. That there's an option? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so no, what do so you I'm... think about submission? I don't like that word. You don't? I don't Why? like that word because it, it makes it seem like somebody's about to be someone's servant or something like that. <laughs> like, I don't, want, I don't want no servant. Right. I want a partner, you know? Honestly, I don't think Otis ever thought of it that way. You know, it's not just the woman who submits because she's the woman. 
there should be equal submission. If we have to use that word, I think it's important for both people to submit. Right. Because right? there's going to be certain times when the woman wants me to do stuff, you know? And right. I'm just like, I don't want to do that. But, you know, for the sake of the relationship, I might have to. That was a good answer. Well, yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting though. And like, people aren't realistic. Why would you even start dating somebody you wouldn't want to do that for? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For me to hear that from him, I'm like, wow, you know? It's refreshing to hear a man tell me he has very similar perspective on things. Brent is definitely racking up points and I am, you know, I'm considering a second date with Brent. I think this was a good date. Definitely, definitely. Cheers. Toast to that. <laughs>
on into group session today and I'm actually interested in hearing about him and his date with Milan. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. He didn't really go into detail too much about it, but if there is something happening or going on, eventually I'll find out about it. How was everybody's week? Good. Mm. Good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I see some matching going on. Okay. <laughs> I'm with it. <laughs> so, this week's dates. I'd love to hear everything. Mr. Otis. Uh, Milan was a cool girl. Um, the day was fun. I love to ride horses anyway, so that kind of hit the nail on the head for me. Was she attractive? She was attractive, yeah. <laughs> was there a connection or a spark between the two of you based on the attraction and the positivity? Definitely. Um, I appreciate her looks, but um, I don't think a connection comes from the looks. So what's interesting is that she went to the same high school that I went to. Okay. So in a way, it did create a certain comfort level um, because it's like somebody who comes from your hometown. Okay. Sounds like a successful date. It was cool. Thanks. Good. Attraction, connection, okay. You got a lot of nonverbals, so so what are your nonverbals? We, we didn't. Actually, he established some rules okay. with this whole situation. He did. I just well, we said, did it together. hold on, let me mm -hmm. talk. Since it you was, didn't it wanna, was a joint thing. didn't want to talk about it, I'm going to tell her. Well, you got to say the truth, though, while okay. you talk about it. You want to tell her? No, I want you to tell her. Okay. So? He established these rules, which I decided, okay, cool. I agree. What were the rules? We're gonna share, we're gonna discuss these, these dates. And um, he didn't really discuss his date with me that much. So he decided that he wasn't gonna tell me certain things, but I'm sharing with you, it's a double standard. It's always a double standard what? with him. What did That's I say a with double you? standard. I think okay. the issue when I went out on my first date is okay. when we got back to the house, I didn't say enough, mm -hmm. so I got scolded. You know, I was on punishment, basically. You used a very powerful word. You used the word scolded. Mm -hmm. Is that how you feel when you are in a conflict with yeah. Mr. Otis? Absolutely. Okay. How do you feel about her feeling like that? I wish she didn't feel scolded. But how I don't do you think feel? it's accurate at all. But <laughs> that is her how feeling she that feels. way, like I said, He's I said, not gonna I, answer I just, it. I just, not gonna answer it. What was the first thing I said, Dr. Nicole? That I wish she didn't feel that way. Did but you hear me you say feel? that? Yes. Okay. Wait, 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 About wait, 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 wait. So you wish she didn't feel that way, but she does. Mm-hmm. Okay? So we've established that. You wish she didn't feel that way, but she does feel that way. And she doesn't feel that way from other people. She feels that way from you. So how she experiences you Maybe. in conflict is that you're scolding her. What do you have to offer in reference to that? You know, I really don't know, and that's why we're here. Maybe you have an answer, Dr. Nicole, because there's times that I haven't scolded her, but she still felt that way. So the majority of it is Charlie feeling things that hadn't happened. What I'm asking from you, Dr. Nicole, is when are we gonna deal with those things? When you take wanna... some accountability. Sir, wait, wait, wait. That's we when. And that's deal. what I'm asking you for. No, no, no. I do. I own up to what I'm saying. Let me help you. I'm not right. Well, let me help you. I'm terrible. We can't deal with her with that when it's something that is coming from you. Sure. Okay. We'll go with that. That's fine. I'm sorry. Okay. You said there are times I have not scolded her and she still feels that way. Correct. Which means. There are times you have scolded her, which is why she feels scolded. That's a fact. That's not a feeling. Came from you, came to me, I bounced it back to you. But you are the one that has to see there is something happening in your communication mm -hmm. that is giving her the experience of being a child that needs to be corrected. That is so far from the truth. I think that Charlie perceives something as being scolding when she doesn't hear what she wants to hear. When anybody holds her accountable, I think she classifies that as, oh, he's scolding me. When she feels like I'm talking to her like a child, I do think that is a part of her self-awareness that her actions reflect childlike behavior. If you don't work through this, what will happen 
the contempt that you have for each other when you are talking that says, I don't respect what you have to say, because right. I'm watching you. Mm -hmm. The rolling of the eyes, <laughs> all of that, mm -hmm. it's contempt. That seed is creating roots, but the roots will travel. It will eat your relationship alive. That's real. Mm -hmm. It'll eat it alive, but you got to pluck it from the root if it's going to make any difference in the long term. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. However, I'm not saying that none of what you're saying can't be done better or anything. S sit with it, Mr. Otis, okay? Sure. So just stay there. You don't have to receive it. That's definitely not it. Otis can be stubborn, but either he's going to take it in and have some accountability, or the outcome could be us not being together anymore. With him, it's like, it's my way or the highway. He just disrespectful. Kind of time to turn things up a little bit. All six of you will be going on dates at the same time and at the same location as your partner. You're not going to act up or anything, are you? For real. If it goes beyond holding hand, then we got a problem. I haven't seen your tattoos. Let me see. I think you got a problem with me being pretty. Girl, shut up! And you look like an idiot. So you better tell him to shut the up. Get up, bitch. 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 Get